Okay, making an offer on apartment, part three. Okay, so the first part we went through the first page of the sale and purchase agreement. The second part we went through the terms and conditions up to, which goes up to 17, as well as putting in your own conditions. And now we're going to go through the, the channels part, GST and signing the document. Okay, so here we go. We'll just go through that now and about to the further terms of sale where you put the extra conditions in. Here you can see the four conditions that if you look to another podcast that I think you should always put in. And then we come down to the channels. So schedule one, list of all the channels included in the sale. Now you should get provided a channels list when you're purchasing a property that should be in the information kit. For example, what's included in that. And that's why I always put in this clause here, the vendor warrants that all appliances like fittings and outlets will be in good working order prior to settlement. Now you should always have this, even though in the sale and purchase agreement it says that all channels are going to be in working order, but let's face it, if a washing machine is not working, are you going to go to court to fight the vendor to make sure it is working? Because the thing is the cost of a washing machine is going to, is going to be less than the actual cost of you to engage in the lawyer and go through that process. So that's why I always put it in, so that means at the pre and inspection you can always check all the appliances to make sure they're all working. So when you hear, so you basically, basically want to go through the channels, you want to have a separate list that's ideal because it gets very confusing, I mean blinds, curtains and drapes. I mean, I don't even know the difference. I mean yes, you, people can describe differences but it gets very confusing. So you want to have a channels list that's separate, for example, this is what we put, this isn't standard, but the full channels list was supplied to the purchaser in the property information pack and we'll generally get someone to initial that, or it will be provided to the solicitor within three working days on top of that. So it's better to include it, make sure you go through all the channels and then put in that clause above. Okay, then we go to, and I'll just, oh, on another note, you can see what's also involved is, a, is what, what is the difference between a chattel and a fixture. Okay, a chattel is something that a, a vendor can decide what comes to the property and what doesn't. For example, a TV and a couch. It's what can be moved around and a mirror. Okay, but a fixture is something that is attached to the property. So a, way of, a good way of describing it is, will it damage the property or will it change the property's overall character if it is taken away? So if that mirror is stuck and embedded into the wall, it is a fixture. But if it is hung on the wall, it is a chattel. So that kind of, I hope that helps. Uh, it was a really interesting case came up in the day where, and this is not, not to do with apartments, but it was to do where they had a, a, a home out the back. Now the home out the back wasn't, didn't have uh, plumbing hooked up, and it, it was just on blocks, so it wasn't firmly connected. Now the person thought when they purchased it, they thought they got the home out the back, but they didn't because it wasn't attached to anything. So, interesting one. Anyway, now the next one is we go through to GST. Now, if GST is involved in here, and you're seeing numbers in here and things you've got to do, and there's GST involved in the purchase, and you're told things like going concern, you're told things like uh, hotel leases, and things like that, that should relate, raise alarm bells. A, because it is very, very confusing for all involved. Even accountants get confused, confused by this. So, yes, the, the, the real estate will agent will explain it through to you, but it's very, very important that you make sure that you're that if you're getting involved in this, that you're putting subject to your accountant's approval. Okay, very, very important. So I won't go through explaining for the GST because it's, it's quite a chapter in itself and there's it so many different, how do I put it? It's not a, just a blanket rule approach. It changes with different circumstances. Anyway. Okay, and then you come down to obviously the signature of the vendor and the signature of the purchaser. Obviously being a purchaser, you'll sign here, if there's two, you'll sign here, and obviously when the vendor signs, etc. Now all through the document, it pays also to initial things. So if I go through the whole document, where you've got the price, you're, if there's a change in the price when you're going, going through negotiation, you initial it, uh, you know, the address and, and all that kind of thing, all the particulars, where it comes down to vacant possession, you'll initial it, that kind of thing. And that's what you should be doing. And then we'll go back to the last page. Now this actually isn't part of the contract, but to make it easy for everybody, you should be filling in your purchaser, your name, your contact details, and who your lawyer is. Now if you don't not know a lawyer, ask, ask your agent if they can recommend a couple of lawyers uh, who are, do a lot of apartments, so they understand unit titles. This is very important because often, for example, I had a, bit, I had a lawyer say to me, look, I don't know what to do, I'm in Hamilton. Are there any apartments in Hamilton? I, don't, I haven't conveyed one. And so then I had to explain to the purchaser who was the lawyer's client that look, you need to get a different lawyer because it was, it was stopping everything. Anyway, I hope that helps, gives you a bit of an idea of 
understanding the sale and purchase agreement when you're going to put in that offer. Remember, you don't have to know it inside out. An agent should, when they do this, explain this all through to you again. And having the conditions in on your solicitor's approval and all those kind of things should give you, well, it gives you the confidence to know that you, you, you're, other than obviously what you're going to pay for the, the, the property, you're doing all the right things to be looking after yourself. Anyway, talk soon. And if you have any questions, feel to uh, uh, put some uh, questions in below or just uh, click my email, andrew at apartmentspecialist.co.nz. Cheers. Bye.